Yeah, so, you know, the, the, the thing with, um, if, you, if you do the observer, you realize there's an observer of thoughts. Yeah, there's an observer of thinking. Um, if, if, a, if something comes up in consciousness, which is very, seems very powerful and pulls you in, then you can, uh, I, th I think the thing of being confused and spiritual clarity. Um, spiritual clarity, you know, a lot of people when they start spiritual work are very identified with their thinking. So they use their thinking and their identity to be the source of finding a solution for a problem. Yeah, so when you're new in spiritual work, you're very much uh, identified that my story and my past experiences and my thinking is the thing that will save me. Yeah. And when you're super identified with uh, thoughts or super identified with a state like confusion or tiredness or fog, um, when you're super identified and you're trying to find a solution in the fog or in the confusion or from your identity, or the right thing to do, and you're heavily identified in this, for me, it's not the answer. Because the identity and the confused state, being identified in the confused state, and trying to use the identity to find a way out of that confused state, like I'm, I'm confused, I don't know what's the right thing to do to get out of my confusion. It's like, that is, the identity and the confused state can't be the way out. Um, because the identity is limited. The confused state means that you're in your thinking or in confusion trying to figure a way out. Uh, and if you have this thing of like, I'm going to use aspects of my identity, like a, my, I'm determined to uh, have determination to get out of this, but those are also aspects of the limited state, parts of the identity. So one of the things that um, that having had profound spiritual experiences is to realize that um, in the, one doesn't have to realize the observer in, in difficult places, but is to realize that the art, on a certain level, if one is confused or doesn't know what the right answer is, uh, or is trying to use the identity or the thinking or traits like determination or aspects of, the, of one's personality to get out of it, uh, um, you can be, it's, it's what I call having a blind spot, because you're like in a circular tunnel trying to find a way out of being confused in your thinking, in your identity, and not knowing what the right answer is to get out of it. So when, <clears throat> in those states, what, the one thing um, I think I'm pretty clear on is that what, whatever comes what, what, if I was confused or if there was a state that came, or even a darkness that came upon me, or I was totally confused of what's the next right thing I need to be doing, then ultimately, and I can't access the observer because I'm lost in this state, the one thing I, I, I would say is there is an intuitive knowing that all darkness and all states must go at some point. I cannot, you know, I am not darkness. The nature of myself is not darkness. The nature of myself is not confusion. The nature, even if I have aspects of my personality, like I'm determined, I'm clever, I can focus, but those are limited aspects of myself. They're not, they're, they're not the light of what I am. So even those things can come and go. Uh, but if a prolonged state of confusion or darkness or not knowing what to do arises, and one seems to be lost in that, then ultimately, for me, it's the thing of um, not attaching to thought, not attaching to resolving the problem in the thinking or the confusion, or relating to any form of identity, and just letting it be without taking action. Because it, it has to run out. Because, you know, if, I, if I'm in confusion or in darkness, then there is no, there is no choice that's going to be very, that's going to be very good in that. I don't know if that makes sense because one is lost in the cloud of confusion and not knowing what to do, and one is trying to use their identity to get out of that. So the thing I know and that I've, uh, through many years, of doing field of feelings, 
is, well, I, I just have to let it be and not take any action and not identify with thoughts. And either it will run out, like the confused state will eventually pass if I do nothing. But, you know, to go to a confused state and my thinking and, th and think of a way out, I wouldn't do that. Because if I'm lost in my thoughts and in a confused state, and I want to think of a, a way out of it, I'll probably make the wrong choice. I don't know if that makes sense. Because I've lost my connection to the observer, and my thinking is now confused, or I'm using my limited identity. And things that come out of that are more, more likely to be confused and misleading. So it's better to do not to use that state to find the answer out of it, but to allow the state to pass. Um, and the thing with the field of feelings is I allow state, and sometimes things can last for a long time, just, you just allow them to be, and you're trying to, um, I call it let them run out of steam. Like darkness, because my nature is, is the light or the observer. So if I just let darkness be there, it's going to run out eventually because my true nature is light. So darkness cannot... If I'm in darkness and in dark thinking and I try and make a choice to get out of dark thinking, I may, I may be misled. I don't know if that's the thing. So don't attach to trying to get out of it, just but let it be and know it will pass. Even the confusion is a state uh, that will pass. And... I was asked this great question, like, what if, what if I'm experience, experiencing something like a state of confusion or a state of darkness? So it doesn't seem to be... But then a state, these states also pass because they're not the truth. So, and they're also observed as well, but that might be difficult. So it will pass because um, some of them may last longer or not, but it's a form of surrender. Of to, to let it be until it passes. And the thing I would say is like, you cannot, you know, if there's anything that's negative that you're facing and doesn't seem to be going away or passing, then um, the thing is to know it will pass. Of course, of course you might die before it passes, but, you know, but, uh, <laughs> but it, will, it will pass because the truth, the truth is, is, is the truth is absolute. The truth is absolute light, love, and power. So anything that is here will eventually pass. To identify that, you know, if I'm in darkness now, if I'm in confusion now, to sort of think that will be my truth forever is not correct. So all things must... Um, what I learned through years and years of feeling my feelings is no matter how much pain, no matter how tired, no matter how exhausted, no matter how ill I feel, no matter, it passes. And I know that even if things may last a long time, but ultimately, when everything that's not true pa passes, only the truth can remain. And my truth is true, which is the infinite light and love of the universe. Um, so, uh, I think the thing is, like, if you're in darkness or if you're in confusion, and you try and make a solution in that thing from your thinking, or from a confused state, that can be a clever, what I call a blind spot tactic of the ego. Because the solution is not in being using confused thinking to get out of confused thinking, or not to use the identity to get out of it. Because you're now hooked into your story, and you're now hooked onto a, a low level. So I think it's a very clever thing, but um, ultimately it will, it will pass, because uh, it's not the truth. And one of the things I learned was um, um, everything must pass that is not true. And some things may last a long time, but they will also pass too. Uh, and uh, yeah, I hope that was helpful. Uh, so just don't be, because uh, that's like a misleading ego trap. Because once you get hooked in the darkness and the drama and the negativity or in the confusion, is that you try and use your ego to come up with a solution. Whereas you want to let it run out of steam and go to a higher level of consciousness.